Dr. Keith Delaplane, entomologist and honeybee specialist at the University of Georgia. And I want to introduce you to the fascinating world of beekeeping. For my 13th birthday, my parents bought me a beginning beekeeping kit, complete with a hive, equipment, and a certificate for a package of bees to arrive in the mail. I set that hive up, but unfortunately it later died. But a kind beekeeper helped me get started again, and I've been a beekeeper ever since. And I'm not alone. There are 140,000 beekeepers in the United States, keeping 3.2 million beehives. American beekeepers produce 200 million pounds of honey a year. Plus, honeybees pollinate and make possible many of the fruits and vegetables that make up the American diet. In fact, the annual contribution of honeybees to crop pollination and production is over $9 billion. But to tell the truth, these aren't the reasons why I've kept bees since I was 13. I keep bees because I enjoy the outdoors. I enjoy helping a young colony grow in spring. I enjoy watching the bees make honey. I enjoy harvesting and bottling it. And I really enjoy selling it and making some money. If you raise animals or work with wood, grow a garden or have an entrepreneurial spirit, you might be a candidate for beekeeping. You'd be surprised at how gentle they can be and of the many places where you can keep bees. In this series, we set up 10 beehives from scratch, that is, with packages of bees in the mail, just like I did years ago. We follow the progress of this bee yard, or apiary, for one whole year, so you will see what you can expect during a year in the life of an apiary. But before we begin, let's look at some of the history of beekeeping. For centuries, honey and fruit were mankind's only sweets. Therefore, bees and honey figured prominently in early societies. The Christian Bible is full of references to bees and honey. Beeswax was used in art, and a weatherproof cloth, rust-proof metal, and make writing tablets. At first, people simply hunted bees in hollow trees or caves and destroyed their nests to get the honey and beeswax. But by 2400 BC, ancient Egyptians had learned to keep bees in clay pots and, probably, did not kill their colonies at harvest time. Ancient Greeks and Romans kept bees, and their philosophers wrote romantic, but biologically inaccurate, accounts of bees and their ways. Rome maintained commercial apiaries in Spain. During the Dark Ages, there was little advancement in beekeeping. However, in monasteries, the only oasis of literacy at that time, bees were kept, honey was produced, beeswax candles were made, and the ancient bee texts of the Greeks and Romans were preserved. During the Middle Ages, beginning about 1500 years ago, beekeepers started cutting trees that contained bee nests and keeping the log sections as hives. At this time, the well-known straw skep appeared. With Europe's discovery of the Americas, honeybees followed shortly thereafter. We don't know when or where bees were introduced to North America, but by the 1640s they were well established along the eastern coast. Many of the most profound discoveries in beekeeping were made in the 19th century. In the early part of that century, there was a rash of experimentation to invent the perfect hive, resulting in some outlandish designs. But then the American Lorenzo Lorraine Langstroth observed that bees in nature maintain a space of one quarter inch to three-eighths of an inch around their combs. Within this space, bees will not build comb, but instead leave it open to allow movement in the hive. By using this principle of bee space, Langstroth built the first hive with movable and interchangeable combs. This breakthrough made possible the rapid growth and standardization of beekeeping in the United States. Langstroth's invention was quickly followed by wax foundation for building standard-sized combs, a centrifugal honey extractor, and a bellows smoker to calm the bees. After over 100 years, these same technologies, with only small changes, are the industry standards today which is a testament to the enduring genius of their inventors. So let's get started establishing our apiary. There's a lot to get done during this first year. 
A hive is made up of stacked boxes called supers. This hive has four supers. Let's take a look. Inside each super are ten removable frames that hang vertically like drawers. Bees build their combs on these frames. Almost all equipment nowadays is made to standard Langstroth dimensions. Let's talk about the placement of your hives. You will want the entrances to face south to southeast because this provides maximum sun exposure. So keep this in mind when you are scouting out locations for your bees. Keep your beehives discreet. Many people are afraid of beehives and may react with alarm or hostility if they see them. Although properly managed beehives are not a public threat, there is still no reason to advertise their presence. Nevertheless, you should always inform your immediate neighbors. And remember, free honey goes a long way to keep neighbor relations sweet. Around here, we have wide open spaces, but if you have close neighbors, Place your hives so that they are next to a tall barrier, like a fence or a hedge, that forces them to fly above pedestrian level. If water is scarce, provide a source so that bees won't hunt for water at your neighbor's swimming pool or bird bath. Check your local ordinances about beekeeping regulations and register your hives with your State Department of Agriculture. Your county extension agent can help you with these and all of your questions about beekeeping. And now for some honey and bee trivia. In colonial North America, honey was used to prepare food and beverages, make cement, preserve fruits, and to make medicines and furniture polish. Woodenware comes pre-cut from the manufacturer. Supers come in two common sizes. A nine and a half inch deep super and a more shallow six and five eighths inch super.